Okay, follow on from the Chinese Honda CG110 copy front end is installing one of those on this thing here. You may hear things behind me in the background and that's cool because that's Andrew. But it's it's not made to fit this bike. This is a Yamaha YG5, I believe. Uh, Yamaha YG5s are uh, a Yamaha YG5. I don't know what else to say about it. I think it was known as the Trailmaster. Yeah. And uh, it was a two-stroke 72cc um, called an 80, I think. Mm -hmm. And it came out in 1965 or something similar to that. Uh, this has a custom engine mount system and it holds in the engine and it's a life end because that's what happens in New Zealand because they're cheap and we use them all the time and deal with it. The rear rim is actually going to be thinner. This is the front wheel and it's actually 1.6 inches wide by 17 inches in diameter whereas this is 1.4 by 17 inches in diameter and it's smaller. We're going to go ahead and take this uh, horrible original setup off and see if we can make that one fit. really good idea is to have some kind of container to put your things in from the bike that you are taking off especially with your fixings and bolts and stuff like that uh bearing wasn't very tight. wasn't tight uh yes it was oh. good unlike the steering head bearings on the new setup which are a kind caged. of caged setup these are just all individual and that is compared to these, which sit on those and rotate. Mmm, fantastic. Got too much free play there. Um, okay, I just need to think about what I need done. I need this to be on this. Um, okay. this is this is still going to be part of the the whole video of the fork swap, but um, you probably won't see us in these exact clothes. Although if we remember to wear small bike stuff shirts, it would be okay. Um, next time we film for this, sh we'll probably be weeks away. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. It will be. And we're back. This is, uh, come and join me. Uh, go behind me. I don't know. Somewhere. It's Andrew's bike. And we have the front end remedied. This is the original bottom clamp. And uh, this is the original top clamp. And this is the original uh, steering stem. Steering stem? Yeah, tube. Tube. Steering tube. It's a tube. And this has been put in here from the original bottom clamp that was on this bike. So now we're going to be able to use uh, these together to make this thing a disc brake front end, which is really, really Just awesome. Cut out of that. Yeah, used to be in here. Now it's in there. Let's uh, see if this works. We have not assembled this yet. We're going to throw the bearings in there, uh, see if we have to bend any metal. Yeah. And hopefully we have some incredible stopping power. Let's get to it. So we're going to reuse the original bearings purely because we don't have any others and uh, some people think this is terrible, some people will do this just as per normal. But I need to clean them off because they do have grit and 40 year old grease just attached, which is kind of gross. It looks like... Um, what are those? These look like Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots are a thing that were in America and then I saw them in Vietnam. Could have dots before. All right, bearing install, uh, just like every other bearing install, use some grease and rock, paper, scissors as to who has to do it. Yeah. This kind of sucks. Yeah, right. oh, there's a few down the side between there, but that's all right. All right, all the bearings laid in place there, just a little bit of grease to help their positioning. Hopefully we've got enough for the top, I haven't counted. How many bearings are we missing? It's fine. You can always get more bearings, so if you don't have enough, this is not... Oh, the end of the world. It's not mechanics advice. I'm only missing one. Yeah. The one you dropped. The one we dropped two. Two. Okay. Put less in the top because you can always open it up the next day when you get them and yeah. put it back in there. You know, you're just assembling this just for a short amount of time. I'll definitely do that tomorrow. Cool. This is arbitrarily together, not done properly. We need to get some stuff sorted, but... Need that thinner. We just need different parts. So we'll get different parts and it'll be okay, but that doesn't mean we're not going to try put it together now. Cool, so done up the uh, mid support clamp here and to be honest it feels 
it needs more refinement up here, but we know that, and uh, it's very exciting. So let's just see if we can put this wheel on and disc on, and got to do a tube uh, and a tyre on the wheel. I can't believe you're wearing a Harley Davidson t-shirt. Couldn't fit let friends suffocate. Alrighty, I'm just going to do this tyre. I've done tyres before on my channel. Probably haven't filmed them that well, but I can't be bothered showing you this, so I'm just going to do it. Cool, so the tire's done, but I do want to stress that these bearings suck, and we, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we do need to change, but... Proof of concept. Yeah, proof of concept, good content. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, just a small reminder from, if you haven't seen, the video where we dismantle this piece uh, of equipment and talk about how good or bad it is. This is the bad part, none of those holes line up, so we do have to drill these about half a mil bigger each, to therefore clamp them down with the bolts. Is it ideal? No. Will it work? Yes. Is it perfect? No. May it break eventually? Probably. Does it matter? No. Buy another one. All good. <laughs> but that looks flash, doesn't it? Awesome. Let's get this on. Alright, so this thing needs to go up here, but the disc is on and this thing looks so rad. Andrew seems to be quite chuffed. There's a few issues here. Uh, we've got the top end not 100% correct. We've got some spacing to do here and some things to make up. Uh, we also have the issue of the front tire being the same actual tire as the rear, but the rim on the rear is way thinner, so it's worse uh, as far as stance goes. We need to check this rim is true um, and all the spokes are tight, and basically, yeah, it's not too much more to go, so this is awesome. Uh, the next part of this video, you'll 100% see this thing absolutely caning it uh, somewhere off-road. I mean, the next video won't be happening until that happens. Awesome. All right, let's finish this off. And um, yeah, can you make one of these fit a Yamaha? For sure. But only if you have a friend that's um, a qualified engineer and is happy to help you. If you had to pay someone to get this done, you'd be in for, you know, three, four, maybe even 500 bucks. And that's if they wanted to take on the job. So yeah, this is real cheap for us. And this bike is now $1,100, not... <laughs> $800 as yeah. it was in the old video, but that's about it. Uh, without the cost of labor, we're doing quite well here. Good news, we've lost a 10 millimeter. <laughs> How good, this is so cool. Uh, I'm quite excited. So it's done, and I'm going to get Andrew to get up here and have a sit and see what it's like, but please be careful of the light bulbs above us. Yeah. A bit stiff at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> they do though. It's a bit weird, but it's not bad. We'll see how it goes. It needs a lot of refinement. Uh, this is just a progress video, something for us to work on in the background and kind of just throw some content out to keep, you know, everyone in entertained and informed about what we're up to. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on Small Bike Stuff and this thing on the next video that this is on, which won't be the next video, uh, will definitely be off-road. <laughs>